Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. Firms must carefully select a level of output to produce. Produce too little, and the firm will miss out on potential profits due to underproduction. Produce too much, and the firm will experience excessive costs and economic losses due to overproduction. When choosing the quantity of output that will maximize profits, a firm will compare the marginal benefit gained from each unit of a good sold to the marginal cost of producing it. For the firm, the marginal benefit of production is marginal revenue. Marginal revenue is the revenue gained from each additional unit of output sold in the market. In other words, by what amount will the firm's total revenue increase with the sale of each additional unit of a good or service? To calculate the marginal revenue of each unit of output, we simply need to take the change in total revenue and divide it by the change in total product. To determine the exact output level where profits can be maximized, a firm will compare the marginal revenue of each additional unit of output to the marginal cost of producing it. If the marginal revenue of a unit of a good is greater than or equal to its marginal cost, the firm will produce it. However, the moment the marginal cost of a good becomes greater than its marginal revenue, it's no longer profitable to produce additional units, and the firm will stop production. Let's take a closer look at how firms determine their profit maximizing level of output. Provided is the cost and revenue data for a typical firm in the market for good M. Assume that the firm can sell every unit of good M at a set market price of $5. We can see the total revenue for the firm after selling each unit of good M which is equal to the quantity of output sold multiplied by the market price per unit. We can also see the firm's total cost after producing each unit of good M, which is equal to the sum of the fixed costs and variable costs of production. To determine the marginal revenue gained from each unit of good M, we simply need to analyze the total revenue for the firm before and after the sale of each unit. The difference in total revenue gives us the marginal revenue gained by the firm when selling each unit of good M. Notice that the marginal revenue gained from each unit equals the market price of $5. To calculate each unit's marginal cost, we simply need to compare the firm's total cost before and after the production of each unit. The difference in total cost gives us the marginal cost paid by the firm in order to produce each unit of good M. From here, we can analyze the marginal revenue and marginal cost of each unit of good M to find a profit maximizing level of output for this firm using the optimal output rule. According to this rule, a firm will maximize its profits by producing a quantity of output where the marginal revenue of the last unit produced is equal to its marginal cost. It's actually pretty simple when you think about it. If the marginal revenue of a unit of good M is greater than its marginal cost, the revenue generated for the firm by producing and selling that unit is more than enough to cover the cost paid by the firm to produce it. If the marginal revenue of a unit of good M is less than its marginal cost, the revenue generated for the firm by producing and selling that unit is not enough to cover the cost paid by the firm to produce it. Therefore, producing that unit would generate a loss for the firm. But, if the marginal revenue of a unit of good M is equal to its marginal cost, the firm can be certain that profits have been maximized because the cost of producing the unit equals the revenue gained when selling it. This means there is no more revenue to be gained for the firm, not even by producing a single additional unit. Think of it like filling a cup of water. If you wanted to fill the cup to its maximum potential, you would have to fill it to the brim to ensure that it holds as much water as it possibly can. Fill it below the brim and there's still room for water to be held. Fill it too much, and the cup overflows. The only way to be sure that the cup holds as much water as possible is to keep pouring water until the water level equals the brim of the cup, 
where even a single drop more would cause the cup to overflow. The same is true for a firm's optimal output rule. By producing a level of output where the marginal revenue of the last unit produced equals its marginal cost, the firm guarantees that it's maximized its profits. Let's go back to the typical firm in the market for good M and find the firm's profit maximizing output. The marginal revenue gained by the firm when selling the first unit of good M is $5, while the marginal cost of producing the first unit is only $4. Because this unit has a marginal revenue that is greater than its marginal cost, it's profitable for the firm to produce it, and therefore, they will. When selling the second unit of good M, the marginal revenue gained by the firm is $5, while the marginal cost of producing the second unit is only $3. Because this unit has a marginal revenue that is greater than its marginal cost, it's profitable for the firm to produce it, and again, therefore, they will. When selling the third and fourth units of good M, the marginal revenue gained by the firm is $5, while the marginal cost of producing each unit is only $2. Again, because these units have a marginal revenue that is greater than their marginal cost, it's profitable for the firm to produce them, and therefore, they'll produce those two. The fifth unit of good M brings the firm a marginal revenue of $5, while the marginal cost of producing the unit is $3. With a marginal revenue that is greater than marginal cost, the firm will decide to produce the fifth unit as well. However, when producing the sixth unit of good M, the marginal revenue gained by the firm is equal to the marginal cost of producing that unit. How did that happen? Take a closer look at marginal cost. Initially, the marginal cost of each unit of good M decreases, but then, as production continues, it begins to increase. Why is that? This is due to the law of diminishing marginal returns. Initially, variable resources are more productive for the firm, meaning each unit of good M produced has a lower marginal cost. Then, as diminishing returns sets in, each additional variable resource is less productive than the last, causing the marginal cost per unit to increase again. Eventually, as product price remains constant and production costs rise for the firm, the marginal cost of producing each unit becomes greater until it equals and then surpasses the marginal revenue that each unit of output can generate for the firm. In essence, the sixth unit of good M is the last unit that this firm can produce before marginal cost becomes greater than marginal revenue, signaling to the firm that it's time to stop production in order to avoid detracting from profits. Need more proof? Take a look at the marginal revenue and marginal cost of the seventh and eighth units. Each unit has a marginal cost that is greater than its marginal revenue. Producing these units would be detrimental to the firm's goals of maximizing profits, since each unit would bring in revenue that is insufficient to cover the cost paid by the firm to produce it. As a result, this firm can maximize its profits by producing six units of good M. Because profit maximization is set where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, any change in product price or production costs will influence the quantity of output that a firm will produce. For example, suppose that the price of good M increases to $8. With a new market price of $8, each additional unit of good M produced by the firm will now generate a marginal revenue of $8. When comparing marginal revenue to the marginal cost of producing each unit, the firm now has a motive to produce a greater quantity of output. At a price of $5 per unit, the firm stopped production at six units because the marginal revenue of the sixth unit equaled its marginal cost. And producing the seventh unit would detract from profits because the marginal cost to produce it was $3 more than the marginal revenue it would generate for the firm. However, now that the marginal revenue of each unit is $8, the firm now has an incentive to produce the seventh unit because its marginal revenue equals its marginal cost meaning that the seventh unit is the last unit that the firm can produce before marginal cost becomes greater than marginal revenue. According to the optimal output rule, the firm should increase production and produce seven units of good M 
in order to maximize profits. Likewise, if the price of good M decreases to $4, each additional unit of good M produced by the firm will now generate a marginal revenue of $4. When comparing marginal revenue to the marginal cost of producing each unit, the firm now has a motive to produce less output. If the firm continued to produce six units, the marginal cost to produce the sixth unit would be $1 more than the marginal revenue it would generate for the firm, thus detracting from profits. Now that the marginal revenue of each unit is only $4, the firm now has an incentive to reduce production to only five units because the fifth unit is the last unit that the firm can produce before marginal cost becomes greater than marginal revenue. According to the optimal output rule, the firm should decrease production and produce five units of good M in order to maximize profits. Changes in production costs can also alter a firm's profit maximizing output. For example, suppose that variable production costs increase, causing total costs to rise for the firm. Because total production costs are now more expensive, the marginal costs paid by the firm to produce each unit of good M has also increased. This means that the firm now has a motive to produce less output. If the firm continued to produce six units, the marginal cost to produce the sixth unit would be $1 more than the marginal revenue it would generate for the firm, thus detracting from profits. Now that the marginal cost to produce each unit is higher, the firm now has an incentive to reduce production to only five units because the fifth unit is the last unit that the firm can produce before marginal cost becomes greater than marginal revenue. According to the optimal output rule, the firm should decrease production and produce five units of good M in order to maximize profits. Likewise, if variable production costs were to decrease, total costs would fall for the firm. Because total production costs are now less expensive, the marginal cost paid by the firm to produce each unit of good M has also decreased. This means that the firm now has a motive to produce a greater quantity of output. Before variable costs fell, the firm stopped production at six units because the marginal revenue of the sixth unit equaled its marginal cost, and producing the seventh unit would detract from profits because the marginal cost to produce it was $3 more than the marginal revenue it would generate for the firm. However, now that variable costs have been reduced, the firm now has an incentive to produce the seventh unit because its marginal revenue equals its marginal cost, meaning that the seventh unit is the last unit that the firm can produce before marginal cost becomes greater than marginal revenue. According to the optimal output rule, the firm should increase production and produce seven units of good M in order to maximize profits. And that's profit maximization. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my micro minute video on marginal product and marginal cost, or you can click here for my video on graphing cost curves. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.